Welcome to the Role Playing History Podcast YouTube channel. I'm Wayne Davis, your host for both the podcast and the YouTube channel. Today I wanted to drop a piece that's not podcast related. I wanted to talk about the TSR controversy. Look, I know a lot of you folks have probably heard about it to this point and kind of understand how it's been going and what the resolution is. However, I also know we have a lot of listeners on the podcast itself that don't keep up with the gaming industry on the reg, or maybe do keep up with it and just didn't really understand everything that was going on with it. So I decided we have a YouTube channel. Let's take advantage of this opportunity and let's talk about the TSR controversy. But before we do that, I think we need to do a little history. Okay, so... We understand that to this point, there are three versions of TSR, okay? There's the original version. That's the Gary Gygax, Dave Arneson founded version of TSR. It was founded to release the original Dungeons and Dragons. That's the version that was sold to Wizards of the Coast in the late 90s and then was dissolved. And in fact, pretty much, I'd say 75% of the gaming world, when they think of TSR, that's the TSR they think of. However, as I noted on the podcast early on, in 2011, we got a new version of TSR, which I'll refer to throughout this podcast as TSR2. Jason Elliott cranked it up, really because he wanted to use the name, and he'd found out that Wizards of the Coast had allowed the trademark to the TSR name to expire. He did what any aspiring guy that wanted to have a little nostalgia in his brand would do. He filed his own trademark application, got the right to the name. And in fact, he went on ahead and decided, you know what, we're, we're going to publish a game with this. It's top secret New World Order. That's the big game that they're known for. But he decided that wasn't enough. I, I need some more nostalgia. So he brought Ernie Gygax and Luke Gygax, Gary's sons, on board, and they started a magazine, Gygax Magazine, that had a really throwback feel to it. It was kind of based off Dungeon Magazine or Dragon Magazine, which TSR had been noted for and had published for years. Unfortunately, Gygax Magazine folded in 2016, and shortly after it folded, Ernie and Luke decided to do a, a yeet on out of there and left the company. However, as I pointed out, TSR2 continues on. Top Secret is still one of its top games. They've got a website that you can go to, and you can see some of the other products that, that they've got going. Now, in June of this year, that's right, June of 2021, like, look at my calendar, like six weeks ago as I'm recording this a third version of tsr came into existence and i'm going to call it tsr3 its three primary partners were ernie gygax justin lanasa and stephen dinehart now tsr3 decided they weren't just going to use the name tsr they were going to reach back into history and pull out one of the classic tsr logos to use okay ballsy but all right well let's do that they also announced, as their first game they were going to publish, Giant Lands. That's a game that Ernie Gygax was the creative supervisor for. Oh, do me a favor. Remember that pulling out an old TSR logo thing? Because that's going to come back here in a minute. And really, I mean, at the time, I think we were all thinking, God, man, we've got two TSRs going. It's, it's a nostalgia kick, man. It's a great time for the game industry. Kumbaya, let's make our s'mores. It's going to all end well, right? wrong. I mean, come on, man. If you've listened to the podcast or if you've paid any attention to TSR's history over the years, you know the original TSR tended to be snake bit. They'd take three steps forward and then turn around and shoot themselves in the foot and take four steps back. Happened throughout their career. So, of course, that was going to happen here. And unfortunately, Ernie Gygax tended, he, he's the guy that kind of started the downfall. On June 23rd, he appeared on Sci-Fi For Me's Live From The Bunker, and he made some comments that uh, didn't really sit well with a whole lot of people. During the show, he made racist comments about Native Americans. Then he ripped into Wizards of the Coast because Wizards has decided to acknowledge the racist history of, of the game. Matter of fact, at one point in the broadcast, he actually made a comment essentially just saying, you know, this, this is where we all just you know, join up with the pack of lemmings. Then to further complicate matters a little bit, he suggested that TSR3 was going to be a haven or a support for creators and writers who have anti-trans beliefs. Now, 
in fairness, during the program, Ernie was given an opportunity to kind of, hey, you know, explain himself. Maybe, maybe he misspoke. Maybe they misunderstood him. Now, what Ernie's response was, was that he felt that there was a certain generation, basically the old school gamers, that were being thought to be uh, out of touch, maybe. His specific words were, quote, old-fashioned and anti-modern. So what he was going to basically do was he was going to take all the great talent he could find and fill the strip mine, and he didn't care what their beliefs were. Now, when you look at all of this, everything I've just said, you've really got to wonder, what the hell was Ernie Gygax thinking? What was his, what do you really think the response was going to be? Did he really think that the gaming world was going to stand up as one and go, yes, this is a, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I can't say that I know what he was thinking. What I can guarantee you is he sure as hell didn't expect what happened next because the entire game industry pretty much broke loose. First, Wizards... I hate it when I stumble on my words. Wizards of the Coast decided and announced they were intending to file a cease and desist order against TSR3. Why, you may ask? Because TSR3 was using a TSR logo. Well, okay, the trademark had expired. Can't they do that? Well, according to several reports that I've checked out, the only trademark that had ever been allowed to expire was the trademark for the TSR name itself. The logos are still owned by Wizards. Whoops. So, on top of that, TSR3 got themselves a whole lot of negative feedback. I would have expected that. I guess they didn't. I mean, it, it wasn't just social media feedback. Multiple game sites and, and different publications ripped them. I know a lot of people put some YouTube channel comments up, you know, and they were saying the same thing. So what's a company to do? I mean, in a reasonable world, TSR3 would post some sort of disavowalment or maybe an apology. Yeah, no, TSR, TSR3 didn't do that. I'll get to it in a minute. TSR2, on the other hand, did decide they were going to step up and they were going to say something. Jason Elliott basically disavowed TSR3, swore that his company was going to have nothing to do with that company, not a chance. As a matter of fact, what he decided to do at that very point was rebrand the company. Got to distance himself as much as he can. So he rebranded TSR2 into Solarium. Smart move on his part. And then he decided to go on ahead and double down with his disavowalment by announcing that Solarian is, will be, and always will be an ally and a supporter of the trans community. So at this point, we can back Solarian out of the conversation. TSR3 is the player left in the game. And things kept snowballing like they always do. Gen Con has announced they're not going to give TS, TSR3 either a booth or a panel at the upcoming convention. Then Gary Khan, which is named in tribute to Gary Gygax, which should that should hurt more, they're disavowing any knowledge of what TSR3 is doing. They're denying any involvement in what TSR3 is doing. They basically don't want to have anything to do with it any either. Then on top of all of that, Luke Gygax, you know, Ernie's brother, he he's basically... I'm out, man. I, I want nothing to do with it. I got nothing to do with what Ernie said, and neither does the family. So you take everything that we've said, and again, what are you going to do? Well, TSR3 still wasn't saying anything. What caused them to actually decide to say something is that basically everybody they were working with was demanding an apology of some kind. I mean, I'm talking about publishers. I'm talking about creators. I'm talking about people who work in the office. They were all just like, you know, what is this shit? Seriously, what are you thinking? So Ernie decided that he was going to take to Twitter and he was going to apologize. Now, in my opinion, it's a half-assed apology, but we're going to, we're going to give him his due. We're going to give the fairness to kind of go through it a little bit. And I'm going to be looking down a little bit more because I want to make sure I get these quotes right. The apology started out strong. He stated that he never meant to hurt anyone, quote, of any race, creed, or color, end quote. And he noted that, quote, everyone has been welcome at my table, end quote. Now, if I was a smart ass, I might note that he said nothing about sexual orientation or gender identity in his apology. But, okay, I'm going to leave it there. Let's move on. And I got to add, at this point, 
Ernie pretty much lost any of the goodwill that that apology tweet might have gotten him when he continued. Because what he was doing when he continued, it, it was almost like a justification for acting the way he acted because he claimed that, that he had been bullied as a you know a gamer and, and a musician and all of that basically his whole life. It was almost like a justification, like, well, I was bullied and people did this. And, and you know, this is why he, he is who he is and does what he does. Matter of fact, I got a screenshot of, of part of the tweet. It was on the Gizmodo uh, website. Here's what it says, quote, I began to wish that indeed I did have a Thompson 45 machine gun inside so that I could wipe away some of those laughs, end quote. And look, I get it. Bullying sucks. Being a victim of bullying sucks. In my mind, though, it's not justification to then become a hater. I'll get more into that later. A little less opinion, a little more news. Unfortunately, all of Ernie's tweets, they've been deleted, and then his account was deactivated. So any ability on my part or your part or anybody's part to go in and research this any further can't really be done. I have to admit, all of the tweets that I got, I got off of various uh, websites, various gaming news websites. You can do the exact same thing. Just, just throw it in your Google search and, and you can find them. Now, I do need to note that TSR3's Twitter it was still active. And somebody... Now, there are several of my sources that they, they believe it's either Justin Lanasa or somebody that was close to him decided to compare all of this negative feedback they were getting to the satanic panic of the 1980s. Again, if you've listened to the podcast, I've discussed what the satanic panic meant to the role playing game world at that time, which is to kind of almost at this point. I don't know. I got nothing. Let's just move on. One of the reasons that so many people believe that Lanasa has a bigger role in all the social media stuff is because in six weeks, TSR has fired one social media person, hired another social media person, then deleted every single tweet off the Twitter account, plus other social media posts. Just saying. However, TSR did decide to rebrand itself. TSR3 did. They decided to rebrand themselves as Wonder Filled Inc. Of course, that move couldn't even come without controversy because the third member of the ownership group decided he hadn't pissed anybody off yet. Let me have a shot at it. On the way out the door, using his own personal Twitter account, he threw shots at Wizards of the Coast for using a, quote, organized, coordinated attack on his company. <laughs> I don't know. Over the last week, I can say this. Seem, things seem to have settled down. Haven't gotten any new news about what's going on. I think basically Solarian went to its corner. Wonderfield went to its corner. And I think everybody's just taking a break. And that, in a nutshell, is the TSR controversy. But since I have you here, uh, let's get a few things straightened out and clear while, while we're all here. First off, in my opinion, there's, there's just no room in the gaming world for prejudice, okay? You can call me naive if you want, but I choose to see the gaming table as the true equalizer, okay? When we're sitting at the game table, you and I, we're equal. It, it doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter what the color of this is. It doesn't matter what our, 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 our sexual orientation is, our gender identity, whether we're, we're, we have the same abilities or the same amount of money. When we're at the table, we're all equals. We're all playing a game together. Like I said, call me naive. Whatever. Now, that being said, and I have to be honest and acknowledge this. Look, we're all human beings. We all have the right to feel however we want to feel. We all have the right to believe whatever we want to believe. If you don't want to associate with people who, who have a different sexual orientation or, or a different gender identity or a different skin color or religious belief than you, okay, that's fine. You don't have to. That, that's basically what every rights group out there is saying. Look, you don't want to associate with us. That's cool. We don't want to associate with you. Where it becomes a problem is when you turn into a hateful bastard that wants to take rights away from these people or not give them the rights that, that, that they deserve. Okay? I'm not trying to tell you what you should believe. But I do want to be very, very clear about something. The Role Playing History Podcast 
Therefore, the Role Playing History Podcast YouTube channel is an ally for everybody, okay? I support the LGBTQ plus community. I, I support people whose ancestors come from all corners of this world. Whether they were, whether they came here of their own volition or whether they were dragged here to be slaves. Or, quite frankly, whether they were already here and they had their land taken by the people who came. We support everybody's right to worship the deity that they choose to worship or, or not to worship anything if that's your cup of tea. Okay? We support those who are differently abled than we are. We support your right to have the values that you believe in. Period. That being, you know, the, the bottom line really on that is we believe that everybody has the right to feel safe in the gaming room, safe at the gaming table, and safe in the podcast and, and YouTube world. Plain enough. Isn't it? All right, well then let me, let me make it as plain as I can possibly be. Don't be a hateful prick on any of our channels. Period. Underline. End of statement. I have no qualms about blocking your ass from anything if you fill my comment section with hateful bullshit. Okay? I don't swear very often on the podcast or the YouTube channel. I am passionate about this. Okay? You want to you wanna post hateful shit on this site, you can fuck directly off. Period. Go. Don't want you here. Sorry. That's just how I feel. I mean, I'm, I'm really not trying to be a prick about this. I just... I. We're working so hard to try to build a community, a community where people feel inclusive. Like I said, you have the right to believe anything you want to believe. I don't have to agree with you. I don't have to understand you, but it's your right. It's when you take that right and use it to beat other people over the head or make them feel lesser than. That's where I have a problem. Now, I, I got to say this too. Look, I've been, I'm 48 years old. I've been gaming for, oh, Jesus, 40 years. And in that time, the, the very large majority of the people that I've run into, man, they are the nicest, most inclusive, open people I've ever met. Of course, as in any pastime, there are some people who, who don't share all those values. And again, it's okay. I said the table is the great equalizer. It's life when you get right down to it. In life, not everybody shares everything, okay? But I got, a, I got a, an idea in, in, this, in this time and in this era and in this world. Maybe it's a... It's, Pie in the sky, maybe, but let's try something different, all right? I mean, we got one little blue-green ball that we all got to try to find a way to live on because it's the only place we've got. Unless scientists figure out there's another planet out there within, you know, 100 light years that we can go jack up as bad as we've screwed up Earth. This is it. This is what we got, okay? So maybe rather than bitching at each other about all the crap that makes us different and use it to tear us apart, why don't we find stuff we can agree on? Role-playing games. I mean, hell, man, if you're, if you're watching this, you're a fan of role-playing games to begin with. So maybe let's use that as a base and see where we can build it. Move on from there. Yeah, I know. I know. It's a bullshit pie-in-the-sky dream. But come on, man. we got to start someplace. So maybe we start with that dream. All right. I'm going to get off the soapbox. Uh, if you want to comment on any of the episodes please do so. If you want to comment in on this, please do so. I do want to hear from you. Just come on, man. Let's be civil about it, okay? All the other details about role-playing history are, are down there in the doobly-a-doo, so check that all out. Uh, as always, it's YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Click on the bell so that you can receive updates, notifications when we put our updates out there. And of course, make sure you catch the Role-Playing History Podcast. It drops Fridays, 11 a.m., wherever you get your podcasts, unless it's audible. We're not there yet. Sorry about that. Until next time, I'm Wayne Davis, and you're role-playing history.